everyone, welcome to Itty Bitty's live read of Opposite of Addie by Julie Gardner. Addie. Wake up, Joe, I whisper. Then I tug at jo Josie's toe, but her foot retreats under a tangle of polka dotted sheets. It's slightly possible we overslept, I tell her. Even possible, probably possible. Note to self, always set a backup alarm. Maybe two backups for Saturday. Joe, can you hear me? Daylight seeps through Josie's shutters, and I glance at the clock again. Definitely overslept. Please, 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 I chew on my lip, biting back surges of panic. I promised Tabitha I'd cover for her today, and I don't want to let her down. So it's really unfortunate, unfortunate that I snoozed my alarm for the first time ever this morning. And then I snoozed two more times after that. Joe, I hate to rush you, I say in a louder voice, but we are running late now for sure. Well, except for the running part. We're in a hurry, but I'm still, but I'm still me. No running unless we're being chased, right? The lump of blankets that is my daughter doesn't laugh. She doesn't even move. Josephine Elaine Barrow. That gets a twitch out of her. Finally, it's time to get up now. From under the pillow comes a long, low groan. I bounce to the edge of her mattress. We have a big day ahead of us. Books to sell, money to donate. Let's get excited. The, pillows, the pillow lifts and a dark head pops up, all wild black curls and attitude. Even her lashes look extra sassy with her eyes squeezed shut like that. Why is this my life, she mumbles, and I almost start to laugh. But if there's one thing Josie hates more than being stuck at a book event, it's being somebody's punchline. I realize helping me out is the most awful thing to happen to anyone ever, I say. But I already apologized to you a million times. A million and one. What? Josie peeks at me through one half open lid. I'd like a million and one apologies. I suck in a deep breath and dig deep for patience. Sure, the world will go on spinning if our booth isn't set up by 9 o'clock, but I'm not ready to surrender that goal, so I have to surrender to buttering Josie up. My dear, sweet, wonderful, generous Joe, I'm deeply sorry for Tabitha London got food poisoning at Soko Sushi last night. Please forgive your no good, terrible, very bad mom for agreeing to take Tabitha's place at the Valentine's Day Expo today. We thank you in advance for your cooperation. Also, I love you very much. The end. I jiggle the mattress one last time. That's a million and one apologies. We good now? Josie props herself up on an elbow. Her smile is crooked. Sly even. Yes, we are good, mother. Because it, I've given it some thought. And I've decided I'm staying home. No offense, but hanging here with Aunt Nina sounds way more fun than being with you when you're in work mode. I shake my head. This isn't work, not officially. And Nina's got rehearsal for her new play. She's already gone. Then I'll stay home by myself. But the expo is at the Rose Bowl. So? And Pasadena. And? I frown. So that's almost an hour away, and 11-year-olds can't be left alone that long. Is that an actual law? I make a sound that's half laugh, half sigh. Most days, having a super smart daughter is a dream come true. They, it can also be a calamity. Like when you need to drag the reluctant genius to an all-day charity event. Bring your iPad, I suggest. You can research that most excellent question while you're at the expo. Almost 12, she says. What? I'm almost 12. Yes, you're almost 12, and yet, Josie's furrows her brow, and yet what? If I spent the whole day without you, I might forget your beautiful face. That would be the real tragedy. Josie rolls her eyes. Yep, that's the face I'm talking about, pure beauty. Stop, she moans again. It's for charity, Joe. Grandy's charity. Fine. She slides her legs over the edge of the bed. But let the record show I'm not happy about this. Noted, I pat her knee. Now, go throw on some jeans and don't forget a sweatshirt. It'll be chilly while we're setting up. 
You mean while you're setting up, she says. I'll be re researching laws on the iPad. Deal, I tell her, finally laughing. And I'm not saying hurry, but I know, Mom. I know. Meet you at the sink in 10. I'll admit it's a little weird that Josie and I still share one small bathroom in a four-bedroom house with two full baths, especially since my best friend Nina uses the same bathroom we do. The thing is, Nina's moving in with us was supposed to be temporary, just until you feel okay again. But I don't feel okay yet. And anyway, no one wants Nina to leave this place. Not even Nina. Believe me, I wish I felt comfortable taking over the master suite with its oversized, oversized bedroom and soaker tub, but those empty spaces were never meant to be mine. And if I learned anything this past year, it's, a, it's that grief doesn't stop on a schedule. So I keep sleeping in my childhood bedroom, the one I moved back to when I got pregnant with Josie. And I keep using the bathroom Josie and I shared while my mother was still alive. Josie called her Grandy, but her name was Mona Barrow, and her readers knew her as Eve, as Eve, Eve Arrow, the best-selling romance novelist. At this year's Valentine's Day Expo, the Eve Arrow, Arrow booth will feature signed copies of Greta's Expectations, my mother's final novel. She signed these books a year ago, before she knew this would be her most successful novel. Before the rest of us knew it, it would be her last. All of today's proceeds will go to One Love, the foundation she created a decade ago. One Love funds research into women's heart disease and Tabitha London, my mother's assistant, thought this expo would be a good opportunity. Not only to keep her book sales going, but also to contribute to One Love. We need to ride this wave as long as possible, Tabitha said, as long as people are still buying. I blink back tears at the implication. Eve Arrow's popularity has an expiration date, like, Mon like Mona Barrow's life and my career. I'm an editor for Two Hearts Publishing, the house Eve Arrow built. Correction, I was an editor. I was an editor. I haven't started a new project since we lost my mother. She's the one who got me the job with two hearts, and I can't face editing a manuscript that isn't hers yet. But I want to help preserve Mo Mona's legacy. So when Tabitha called me to say she got food poisoning, of course I offered to run the booth for her, which means I'll spend today looking at book jackets and giant posters of Eve Arrow with those fire red lips, and that plantum bob. Not my mother's face, just an author photo. Fans will rave about her while I make change for them, grinning with my teeth but not my eyes, nodding, agreeing. Yes. Yes. She always wore channel number five. Yes. One Love Funds Research for Women's Heart Disease. Yes. It's pretty ironic that my mother died of a broken heart. How will I make it through today when I can't even figure out what to wear? This is a Valentine's Day event, but it feels more like a funeral. Most of the time I stick with ponytails and flip-flops, which is fine when you work from home. But at the expo, I'll be representing Eve Arrow, the green of lipstick and, la and lashes in channel number five. I need something more feminine, so I pick a pink cashmere sweater to, to pair with a long black skirt and boots, pretty good for February 14th, especially for someone who doesn't believe in love. By the time I get to the bathroom, Josie's already in there. We take turns washing our face, faces, rubbing, our sun, rubbing on sunblock, brushing our teeth when Josie leans in to spit. I have to crane my neck to see the mirror. Please stop growing immediately. Can I get a cell phone, she asks, immediately? Nope. Then I think I'll keep on growing. While Josie combs through her tangle of curls, I curl my own hair into a bun. As usual, the result is messy, with several stands, strands spiraling loose on both sides. Josie tells me they look like black licorice. 
I don't ask her if that's a good thing or bad. After a few quick swipes of mascara, I'm as ready as I'll ever be, but not Josie. She pulls a tube of fire red lipstick from the drawer. I think Grandy would want me to wear this. That does sound like Grandy, I say. So Josie stares me down. Can I? You're too young. Josie opens her mouth to argue, but I cut her off. Yes, Joe, that's the law. It's my law anyway. Whatever, she rolls her eyes. Just because you think chapstick is makeup. Well, my lips are very happy. Doubtful. Ha ha, I say. You're hilarious. But now it's time to go. Although the Saturday morning traffic is late, it still takes us 45 minutes and three different freeways to get to Pasadena. Josie's got her ear pods in, staring out the window, so I turn up the music and sing off-key to blank 182. We pass rolling hills of oak trees, mustard and lupine, then rocky cliffs dotted with cactus and palms. When we finally reach the light at our exit, I check the rear view mirror. Josie's still got her forehead pressed against the glass. Hey, I wave to get her attention, and she pulls out an ear pod. Just one, though. What? I almost forgot to tell you the good news, she raises an eyebrow, like she doubts the goodness of my news. Nina thinks this new play isn't too mature for you. Apparently, there's no nudity. Josie turns back to the window. Sounds boring. Come on, Joe. I turn down a tree-lined side street, looking for event signs that will lead us to the Rose Bowl. You've been begging to see one of her plays. Owen's in this one, too. So? So you love Owen. Gross. He's Aunt Nina's boyfriend. I didn't mean you love him. Love him. Whatever. I'll probably go to their no nudity play as long as it doesn't start this early in the morning. It probably won't, I say. And since you'll actually be 12 by opening night, I might even let you wear chapstick. Ha ha, she says. You're hilarious. At the next stop sign, I turn to look at her and she flashes me her sweetest smile. Can we stop at Starbucks for a scone? They'll have muff muffins for the vendors at the expo. Just one caramel machino? Then, pretty please? We don't have time, Joe. Sorry. Whatever. Everyone else is always late to everything. Not me. Well, sometimes I wish you were like other moms. Sometimes I do, too. Josie. I told my mom I wouldn't ha help set up, but then I felt bad for being so mean to her, especially since she didn't want to do this whole expo thing today either. And then I thought maybe if I was nicer to her, she'd let me get some cotton candy. So I offered to make a book display. Mine's the one on the left-hand side. The book's called Greta's Expectations. I stack some of the books neat, but I let the, let the ones in front be messy on purpose. That's how Grandy taught me to do it. The idea is to make someone think a lot of people already picked up the books, checked out the back, bought lots of copies. Like, hey, these novels are selling too fast to keep up. The story must be super interesting. I'll take one, too. Or maybe two. Two. It's a mind trick, and Grandy plays a big part of sales in about tricking someone's mind. I mean, Grandy said... And the trick must be working because 10 of people have bought our books so far today. I mean, Grandy's books. I'd hate if anyone thought I wrote this stuff. The co covers all have these muscly men on them, like they just forgot to wear shirts or something. And don't get me started on the girls. They show a whole lot of boob. Cleavage is what it's called. Ooh, so sexy. Grandy's pre pretty famous to people who like sexy books. I mean, she was famous when she was alive. Grandy's writer name was Eve Arrow, which is just her middle name and her real last name, Bar Barrel, except like Cupid, for all the romance. I called her Grandy. I miss calling her that. I miss her a lot. So does Mom. We're not the only ones either. Strangers love her. They act like Randy dug deep down inside them and pulled out their heart's desires. You put my dreams into words so that they would come true, Eve Arrow. Can you believe people actually say stuff like that? Weirdos. 
I used to listen when they'd call in to her radio interviews and also when they came to her book signings. I mean, when she signed books. I keep forgetting to use the past tense. We're learning about tenses now in language arts. Thank you for listening to this portion.